Hey you folks, Quilly Teen here, and welcome to another episode of our Let's Try of X-Plane 11 Public Beta 1. Continuing my flight in the Cessna 172 Skyhawk over here. And we are getting close to Sudbury at this point. And the way we can tell it is we know we are... Oh, you can actually see the, uh, the needle start to move. We want to come in on runway 04. It's 40 degrees on the compass over here, which is what I set the nav to. And if you add 180 degrees to 40 degrees, you end up with 220. And as we approach radial 220 from the VOR that we're tuned to, the needle will get closer and closer to the middle. And right around the point where it hits 220 over here is when they'll be in the middle. Um, and that means we can turn, and instead of going at 80 degrees, which is what I'm doing now, we will turn to 40 degrees at that point. Now, we could easily do that manually if we keep watching here, but the other thing you can do is on your, um, on your autopilot, you can put it on approach mode. So nav, will get you to lock into a particular nav heading on your thing, or will follow the needle, uh, and approach what it will do. If you've got it tuned, you'll fly towards the needle, and then once you get close enough, the approach mode will turn off, and it'll turn to the correct um, heading and do that, and that tends to be a good way to do an intercept over here. I mean, I'm not going to say that my angle is particularly magical. A lot of times you do sort of a 45 degree offset or whatever. Um, I'm probably starting a little further away than it required for this. Uh, although, on the other hand, I don't know, because we're only 25 nautical miles away from the airport, basically. Technically the nav beacon, but it's right on top of there. There we go. We're Are we starting our turn from the approach? Oh, not yet. No, we're just still holding stable, and that's going to be fine. Fuel is still, you know, low. We didn't leave with a whole lot. Uh, we've got about two and a half gallons in each tank of fuel, but I think we'll do okay. We're currently doing 115 knots. And yeah, we're about to hit that um, that radial at 40, well, 220 degrees here, or we'll hit the middle point there. We'll turn to that 40 degree marker, and that's going to be hunky-dory. And there's the plane being nice and loud. Can back up. The sound will die off a little bit. There we go. Green forests and lakes as far as the eye can see. And that sort of very classic uh, Cambrian Shield is the uh, the geology that we're on now. Very old, old, old rock formations uh, that were buried for a very, very long time beneath an ocean, actually. So you don't get much in the way of, uh, you don't get like dinosaur fossils or anything in this area. Although, especially back in the Niagara and Sca Escarpment, which is, I think, kind of... Is it limestone-y? I don't know. It's a softer sort of stone. But there's a lot of fossil fossils in there from... Um, various like oceanic life forms especially like just old like shelves and that sort of thing um from a very 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 long time ago and that's also very interesting i'm not actually a geology buff it's interesting that it keeps coming up in these flight discussions but i mean what else am i going to talk about it's it's rocks and trees and rocks and trees and rocks and trees and water there's really not a whole hell of a lot going on so you know it is what it is anyway oh there you go just hitting the needle now and indeed, the uh, autopilot approach system is going to turn us to 40 degrees. You'll see here, again, we're not on heading mode, so it doesn't care where the heading bug is anymore. It's going to turn to that 4.0 right around there. It'll overshoot it just a bit, um, the autopilot on this particular plane, and then wobble back, but that will be fine. 22 nautical miles out at this point. I believe I'm going to start my descent. I don't know. You don't have to rush it quite yet. I'm going to wait for it to stabilize over here on the automated turning and then we will see yeah it's still gonna be too far for us to see the airport it's somewhere out over there i don't even see the city properly yet yeah that will just hold off for now still flying below this cloud layer i mean it's thin enough that we could probably pop through if we wanted and maybe still not break visual flight rules but no flying below that is perfectly happy 4,000 feet. We're not, this is not a particularly like, you know, tuned altitude for a variety of different things. Um, there are certain magic altitude numbers depending on what direction you're going to and various things like that, but you know what? These guys are mostly empty. Let's let's not care about the rules. It's going to be fine. By the way, I didn't really show off some of the sign, sound design here. Let me open the door. Not a good idea to do mid-flight, but just listen. Ah, eh, pretty cool, huh? Very cool. Uh, it does it does f up your uh, your flying uh, your aerodynamics, so not really recommended. But ultimately, we'll be okay. So now uh, the approach part is kind of irrelevant. I'm pretty sure I could toggle that off at this point, and it wouldn't make any difference. Unless I mean, I don't think it does glide scope stuff on here. Um, so mostly we're just on nav mode, where it's going to keep um, whatever orientation we have set here. It's going to keep that locked in so that we're nicely in the middle of the uh, the needle over here and flying at that. If I did turn this, it would actually the needle would move to however we're offset 
from the directionality here, but we do want to come up on this at about a 4.0. Again, we won't at this point, we are aligned with the runway, or we're parallel to the runway, uh, but the runway may be slightly, um, I think it's going to be slightly to the right of where we're going to come in, because if we zoom in and zoom in and zoom in and zoom in, see this here, this is actually the tower. I think that's on top of the tower. Mm, no, the tower's over here. So here's just a big antenna, and that's what we're tuned into. But you can see that based on our current orientation, that tower is just to the left of the runway. So at some point, we're going to have to just break off of this and actually head to the right. Um, if we were coming in on the 22 runway, uh, which is the same runway we're on, but the opposite direction, which probably means if we if we were to talk to the um, to the tower, almost certainly they'd tell us to take a different runway. I mean, it's partially depending on wind and, and different things like that. But the 22, which is the other way, it's got ILS, instrument landing system, uh, which is quite cool because then the uh, the vertical arrow starts to be used for stuff. It's got the glide scope, and it'll tell you exactly the correct angle to use to come in on. Um, I don't know. I don't think it's got a very high. I think it might just be like, is it ILS-1 is the basic one? Um, which means it can be used in some weather, but you've got like higher level ILS, which can be used for fully automated landing. Um, and it's kind of, it's kind of funny. Like normally I would say like, oh, the plane, you know, the plane computers are totally able to fly themselves as long as conditions are good. It's actually kind of the opposite. It's when conditions are so bad and like a human can't see anything, right? There's like zero visibility. That's when the computer takes over because the computer doesn't need to see anything. It uses all the radios and stuff on the ground to know its direction or its orientation exactly. And then it just, you know, uses that for a thing. All right, we're now 15 nautical miles out. I'm going to start a descent. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take off the altitude lock, go into vertical speed lock and just go ahead and ask it to descend at like... I'm going to do that. That was weird. Descend at like 500 meters or feet per second. God damn it, per minute. 500 feet per minute, not per second. That would be a whole other kind of problem. Uh, I'll have to keep an eye on the uh, the speedometer over here, make sure it doesn't overspeed. And actually, our RPM is getting a little bit high here, so I'm going to pull back on that. Typically, the way you actually, like, you control your your climb and your descent with your throttle. And you can control your speed sometimes by your, your pitch, it's sort of like an inverse relationship to how you might expect. The best way to, design, to descend isn't to point down, it's to pull back on the throttle a little bit um, so that you, you end up sort of mostly sort of level in terms of, you know, your, 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 well, your horizon and whatnot, um, but you pull back on the throttle a little bit to pitch down, um, and that's quite good. Plus, you don't want to overspeed or you'll rip your wings off. So just pulling back a bit, make sure the RPMs don't go out of range, out of whack, make sure we don't end up uh, outside of the green zone over here. Oh, I keep... Grr. There's a little knob here that you can use to tune. Your um, your Speedo is um, is calibrated based on uh, temperature. As you can see here, you can choose what temperature is. So it's oriented... I don't know what this is supposed to represent, but it's... it's uh, <laughs> It's meant to be calibrated based on the air temperature, uh, and presumably you can tune it based on your altitude or, I don't know, different stuff, I'm not sure. And this is airspeed as well, it's not ground speed. So, anyway, I keep, like, trying to zoom in and my mouse happens to be there, so I'm, like, completely effing up my speedometer. I don't actually know, I don't know the correct way to tune this based on temp. Uh, that's in Celsius. How do I switch? How is that? Is that Celsius? No, it's not 24 degrees. I have no idea what that means. Oh, am I switching to volts? Could be. Anyway, I don't know. So I leave that alone. It's fine. It's fine. Uh, you can call in the tower to find out what the barometric air pressure is and use that to tune your altimeter. Um, and your gyroscope, uh, which is here, drifts over time, although I don't think it does by default in the simulation. So, and the problem, this is a pr proper compass, but as you sort of make moves and jiggle about, the compass can like take a while to settle in place. But once once you're pointing in a static location, the compass is very accurate, magnetically speaking, whereas the gyro can drift over time. So once this is settled, then you tune your gyro to say, uh, you know, exactly the same sort of thing. Um, but I don't think you have to worry about it in the default settings, so that's gonna be okay. So we're nine nautical miles out from our airport, and if we zoom in a bunch, so there's, I don't know, is that supposed to be the city of Sudbury? I guess perhaps. The airport's not right in the city. I mean, I guess no airports are. Well, that's not entirely true. Um, but we're gonna be flying mostly past the city. And so we should, there's the airport, whoops. 
There's the airport over there. So we continue to descend. Excellent. We're coming in at 2,500 feet. And we're definitely, you can see, we're coming in to the left of the airport. So what I'm going to do at this point is what? I mean, I'm, it's a little hard to see still. So I'm not sure if I want to really take control. Um, let me uh, let me arrest my descent for a little while. Just lock it in at 2,500 feet, so it'll take a little bit to even that out. And yeah, I'm having a hard time keeping my eye on that airport in distance. So we'll just keep the approach going there. Um, you know, I could radio in, we could taxi, we could do different things. There is a um, there is a uh, like a radio system. That, you know, there's an air traffic control you can talk to, uh, but it's fine. It's fine. Who cares, right? Let's just pretend that we got all permission to do a direct approach here, and that's going to be okay. All right, yeah, I should definitely take us off the, um, the nav mode at this point and go ahead and just try to shimmy over to the right. Something like that, and then we'll wait until we're a little bit more lined up. Actually, let's go a little bit more aggressively here. This is always the tricksy part. And the one nice thing if you got ILS, because one, one of the things with ILS is that it will be completely properly aligned. It's not going to be this sort of offset thing because the tower is just off to the side. Because now we can't really trust that no more, no more. But one of the things you can trust are the lights off in the distance. There are four lights right there. Um, and it's a really low-tech system. It's just, you know, a series, actually, it's technically eight lights, four red, four white. And just a, like a little, you know, a little piece of wood in between them, um, at slightly different angles. And when you are in the sweet spot in terms of angles, I went too far there. Uh, you'll see two white and two red. If you see more red, you're coming in too low. More white, you're coming in too high. So you can sort of tune everything based on that. Just shift over. We're, we're getting pretty lined up now. Excellent. The other thing I have a hard time is like where exactly is like the middle point. Of this, I think. I mean, it's it's on the screen as opposed to, you know, you're not trying to line it up with the middle of your plane here. It's with the screen. That's pretty good. Looks like we're a little high up. That's fine. I'm gonna go and start to kill off some speed at this point, and we're gonna go and drop flaps first notch, which is should be more than plenty for this. I don't know. I might go full things, but yeah, I'm definitely I'm definitely too high at this point, and a little too far to the right. So just sending it over a little bit over here. That should be fine. Be relatively easy to make this adjustment. I'm not. I'm not concerned. What I don't like is airports that don't have that. Oh, I need to stop fight. Wait. Oh. Oh. Shit. That's what's going on. Oh. Poop. 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 I was fighting the uh, the autopilot here, which is still adjusting. No. Oh. Fuck off. Pause. All right. You got to hold it for a second to get rid of it. Okay. And then let me just quickly adjust this to sort of a more natural point here as a base. I really need to hotkey that again. And then I like to have that set just so that I can see the top of this. There we go. And then orient it that way. Okay, let's try not to F this up too badly. I didn't realize I was fighting the autopilot. That was my dumb mistake. Actually, I mean, the autopilot should be just, like, off explicitly here at this point. That's fine. Still fuel. I mean, not a ton of fuel, but it's okay. All right, we've bled off a lot of speed here. You can see at 80. So I can actually afford to pitch down quite a bit more aggressively here without worrying about overspeeding. But definitely... There we go. Putting the flaps down uh, tends to bleed off a lot of speed, but changes your angle of attack considerably as well. So let me nose down a little bit on this because I'm still fighting a lot. This is really, really far too high. I should probably be doing X curves to really actually burn off more height and more speed. I'm really worried about this. Let's throttle back some more. And a little bit of rudder. I mean, mostly you're going to be using bank for most of the time, but at this point... The rudder may be better, and it doesn't help that I'm not actually lined up properly on my screen. There we go. We're definitely, we're still way too high, but I don't think by that much. I think we will be okay here. Speed, dropping below 80. But with the flaps where we are, we don't actually have the numbers on our um, on our speedometer here for the, uh, for the stall speeds indicated at various flap numbers, but that's going to be okay. And actually, I'm actually wondering, it feels like those lights, oh, there we go, there's the red. I'm like, this shouldn't be all white at this point. There we go, two and two. Perfect. So we did recover that. Killing off all the speed. Lovely. Excellent. 
Excellent. And just... And there we go. And then break, 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 break. And then you'd find the uh, closest exit at some point. Uh, how about I... Do -do. There we are. Outside the plane. Uh, I guess at this point we would... Raise our flaps again, yeah? We don't want the flaps there, because it's going to be too easy to take off. Oh, I should have been... Um, it's more important on takeoff than landing, but you want to be fully lean, or fully rich, mostly, in case you have to do, like, you have to abort the landing and you have to take off again. You actually want your mixture to be as um, fully rich as possible, because that is how you're supposed to be when you take off. So, where's the exit? Oh, up there. Alright, so we'll just stay on this for a while. Hopefully no one's landing from any, you know, direction that was bad, but that's actually not too shabby. And we came in a little high because I forgot to turn off the uh, the autopilot. That was a big mistake. And also, I would dramatically make my life easier if I remembered to uh, set some keys on my joystick to tune the pitch. I don't think I have. Let's see here. Uh, boom. Joystick. <laughs> yeah, no. Usually I do these. Like, I don't, you know, I don't think I usually care about having landing gear on here at all. Um, flaps, yes, although even then I was clearly forgetting to use it, I was doing it uh, manually, but I think I would prefer if this were, in fact, um, trim, trim up a bit. Pitch trim, uh, actually down. Is there a bit? No, I guess I'm thinking of uh, the mixture, so pitch trim down, and over here, Pitch trim up. There we go. And now if I look down and I hit these buttons, there we go. Yeah, that's the sort of thing we want. Excellent. Wonderful. And there's our... Is that not our sign for... No, it's not. Where the hell is the... Uh... There it is. The exit. And then we go over to the um, we go over to the uh, the building, drop some people off. That's probably not the right word for things. There you go. Take a. You can actually ask the um, the tower. You know, hey, uh, where do you want me to go? And they say, oh, turn off here, then take a to parking spot ZZ134. Yeah, not not really those numbers, but there you go. And actually, I gotta say, this is surprisingly close to the Sudbury Airport. Certainly a lot closer. Again, all the defaults in X-Plane are a lot better than I'm used to from the Microsoft series or Prepared series, uh, which have sort of more generic -y stuff. I'm not going to say this is, like, accurate, but it's it's accurish, actually. It's surprisingly accurish based on the map. And the same thing, too, if I open up the map here and I zoom in on the Sudbury Airport, Right? You get you get the layouts here, and I think those are all, like, the actual layout, and then they base the buildings, which, I mean, do come in procedurally based on those things. But then we got some planes waiting for us, and I'm pretty sure these little trucks and things like that do move around. I'm pretty sure I'm breaking about 17,000 rules by driving here as opposed to there and coming right behind these planes, but shush. It's fine. It's fine. Let's come in over here. This is my parking spot. Deal with it. And apply the brake, and we'll just kill the engine by leaning it out. Excellent. Turn off all the things. I guess I never put on my landing lights because, you know, why would I do that? I don't think you need the fuel pump to keep running while your plane is going, actually. I'm not sure. It depends on the plane. I don't remember what it's like on this one here. I think we can... Can we still put down these visors? Oh, we can't put down these visors in this model? Boo! Now, here's an interesting question. If I open this door... And then I step out of the plane using the first-person control. Oh, that's up. That's not what I wanted to do. I want to go forward. Is the door open? And apparently it is. Look at that. Hey, hey. Woot, woot, woot. Not open very wide, but that's okay. Fantastic. Can I, like, interact with any of the controls from out here? No. Still, though, hey, I got a cool little leather jacket. Excellent. Well, we've made our flight. Anyway, so that's the test of one of the stock general aviation planes here in um, X-Plane 11, Public Beta 1. There are, uh, I guess we edit flight over here. There are bigger planes. I mean, first of all, there's like kick-ass. Look at this bad boy with like the, I don't know what you call this sort of tail configuration, but it's awesome. Um, and I guess it must be, it must be a jet. 
with that intake. I mean, I don't see any props. So I guess though, I really enjoy uh, driving the Beechcraft Baron 58. Very, very fun. King Air, I think, is a bit more of an old school plane. That can be a lot of fun as well. Um, but if we wanted to try one of the bigger built-in planes, uh, we could take a look at the 747-400 over here. Which might be fun. What's interesting, actually, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to load up the 737-800 over here because this 732 is actually the 737-200. I think they call it the 732 uh, just for, like, you know, copyright stuff. Like, there's no Boeing because this is a, a payware airplane that I picked up over here. But it's another 737, just a much, much older version. So I'm actually, I'm going to pick up the, uh, the bigger one here and... Um, to, I guess to minimize Lowe's time, I should stay at the same airport. I don't know. We could load something else up. Let's go to, um, let's go to Heathrow. London Heathrow. Not this Heathrow, which is a grass strip in Texas. Very big difference. <laughs> There's so many times I've loaded the wrong Heathrow over here. Uh, so 142 local time over there. Uh, start new flight. So again, we'll get a loading time because we got to load new, or, a new aircraft. More importantly, we have to load entirely new terrain and quite a bit more of it because we're going to be pretty damn close to London. And Heathrow is a big airport, so there's going to be a bit more to load in there. But we'll just, we're not going to take off of this one. Um, we're just going to take a look at the uh, the cockpit and all that sort of stuff and just just glance around at um, what some heavier iron will look like. Oh, I don't know if I had the box check to start turned on. And I don't know what process is involved in turning on the seven. What is this? The seven three seven. It's probably a bit more of a complicated process than just like, you know, a couple of fuel pumps and then revving the engine on the Cessna one seventy two. So that I'm not super comfortable with. We'll see how it goes. There we go. Finished asynchronous loading. Should be nearly done now. That that's normally the big step. But again, it is loading a lot of stuff in the background, and I don't have this on an SSD. And again, other than these uh, load times. Things are usually pretty fast. I mean, it's loading, it's streaming in new content dynamically as you fly over terrain. But I mean, effectively, you're flying over terrain quite slowly. Even if you're going like, you know, 0.8 Mach, it's not that quick. And yeah, oh yeah, everything is everything is turned off. Um, um, customize, start with engine running, apply changes. Um. So that option is there, but it didn't actually... Oh, maybe if I hit um, reload the current aircraft. I think if I if I picked a different location or something too, it would have caused the airplane to reload. There we go. Now it's started with everything running. Oh, you can hear the... Uh, you can hear the, uh, the, the big jets revving up. If I pop outside, we can take a look at this bad boy of a plane. Look at that. Hey, shiny... These things are starting to spin up, and I don't know if I have the uh, the graphics turned on for that, but you will actually see, like, heat effects coming out here and giving some warp distortion. You may have to have all the HDR effects and everything turned on to be able to see that. I'm not sure. But it does look quite cool when it's operating. Yeah, it looks like it's no-go right now, which is too bad, but that's okay. Um, if I go back in here, can I... Can I go through this? I'm not sure that I can. Um... No, I don't think the cabin is simulated. Let's see. Nope, nope, nope. Just empty on the inside. Okay, fair enough. Fair enough. Move forward over here. Excellent. And yeah, a very different experience. This one uh, has the flight computer. It has, well, these screens, um, which are going to be... So it's present in the 737-800. But in the next video, I'm going to be flying with the 737-200, which isn't going to have a flight computer. Although... It works. That's one of the things. The uh, I have to add out of date. I gotta take a look at that. So I'm just noticing that warning, and I wasn't seeing that before. Um, I don't think I've got any uh, any um, routes programmed in here. But um, if I put in um, departure airport, uh, what is it? E G L L. Oh yeah, it's not. It's not like this at all. Okay. Um, I'm probably just clicking. Oh, I didn't realize you could pop this up. That's quite cool. Oh, but the buttons don't actually line up the same. Look at that. They actually have slightly different uh, labels in a few places. Index as opposed to init ref. Nearest airports. Airports. EGLL. That was right. I don't know. Anyway. Um, yeah. 
So this is, these big planes, you do tend to fly them with like a lot of flight computer stuff, a lot of automation, a lot of the screens. Um, and that's a good thing. Don't get me wrong. But it, what we're going to do is we're going to fly one that doesn't have this. I mean, basically, it's, it's like learning an entirely new game just to learn how to use these flight computers because there's a lot involved in it. But it's quite cool. I mean, they do everything. They know um, they know everything about like how much fuel you've got in here, your weight, your this, that. It, it calculates all these things for you, which is really, really nice. But instead of doing that, we're going to be using an old school one that doesn't have any. I mean, look at this. Like, all these things work. It's so freaking awesome. Uh, and that is something that's a lot better in um, in X-Plane than in uh, Microsoft Flight Simulator, where they do have, like, a 747 in there, but nothing works. It's all for show, basically. So um, you really have to get a third-party one, where, again, here, the built-in stuff is surprisingly good. There's a shocking amount of stuff going on. Can I mess with these? Huh. Ooh. Ah. I don't know what this does. I don't know what any of this does. Just hit all the buttons. Watch the plane explode. Excellent. All right. Thanks for watching, folks. See you next time.